2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Paul is more than anything else, he is preeminently the apostle of grace. Grace is his big word. There's apparently there's 155 references to the word grace in the New Testament, and Paul is responsible for 130 of them. It's kind of a bit of a fixation with the guy, you might say. And every single letter, every single one, starts with grace and finishes with grace. It's the keynote of the way he taught, and you might say it was the secret of his life. And it's the major characteristic of, of Christian life, Christianity itself. It's amazing. Grace is amazing. And uh, it's described as, it's explained as unmerited favour. Free gift. Unmerited. You don't earn it. It's just given. It's sheer gift. And it's often occurred to me that grace is not only unmerited, but it's actually the opposite of what I deserve. That's right, isn't it? I, I deserve uh, punishment for, for sin. Uh, I deserve death and I receive eternal life. I deserve not to be loved and yet I am loved. I deserve to be left to one side and yet I'm blessed. And my natural tendency is to take grace for granted and to sin more and more. But because of this tidal wave, of loveliness in my life, the presence of God. I am being transformed day by day. You ask my wife. <laughs> more and more into his image. He is at work in me. And it's grace, grace from A to Z, from start to finish. I'm being changed. And God reveals his grace to us. And I need to learn more about this. You know this old acrostic which says, God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace. God providing for us freely as we learn to trust in what Jesus has done. All that we ever need. He commands us to walk in it. Realities that we could never produce on our own. He just gives to us stuff that we couldn't earn. He throws our way. Grace offers what every human being desperately needs. And he does it for, for nothing. Uh, it his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Isn't that great? There are three exchanges in this uh, passage here in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. You're exchanging the impersonal for the personal. The grace of God is always personal. It is not a, a force or a substance or a thing that's given your way, like a, an open check or something, I've heard it described that way, but it's not. This grace is only found in a person. It is, as Paul said, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it's only accessible through personal relationship, isn't it? And Paul expressed it this way. He said, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as, well, the polite word is dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowships of his sufferings being made conformable even unto his death. It's an exchange and Paul was expressing in, in that amazing passage the way that God takes it personally and so enters into a personal relationship with me, with us, that makes it possible through that relationship for us to come close to him, that I might know him. The second exchange is the exchange of riches for poverty. The first exchange is what God gave to us. The second one is what Jesus gave for us. He exchanged his riches 
for our poverty. Grace was made available to us because Jesus was ready to take our bankruptcy on board himself that we might be able to enjoy his his bank balance his his spiritual riches jesus enjoyed heaven he enjoyed the riches of god and yet he exchanged that for our poverty it's like a real riches to rags story on our behalf he received worship and honor he enjoyed the limitless advantages of deity and yet he exchanges riches for poverty and then he becomes poor. For, he, for our sakes, he becomes poor. He humbles up himself, walking like the one sane man in a, in a world full of idiots. Or the, the one germ that Domestos couldn't kill. <laughs> Just completely different from anybody else around him. He who knew no sin was made sin for us. That we might be made the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5. So that's the... That's the uh, exchange that grace offers. And the third exchange is the exchange of our poverty for his riches. Through these workings of his grace, everybody who believes in him becomes spiritually rich. Um, as I described, our efforts at doing it ourselves as filthy rags. But grace gives us these these holiday garments, man, we are we are in festal robes because of what Christ has done. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? The exchange of riches for poverty. The exchange of our poverty for his riches. And here's how he finishes the letter. He says, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. God bless.